Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today I'm at the Cathedral of St. Paul in Birmingham, Alabama. With me is Bruce Ludwig. He is the organist and director of music here and a good friend uh, for many years. And I'm so excited to see this brand new organ here. This is a NOAC instrument uh, built, just finished in 2021. Uh, Bruce, tell me about this organ. So this is the Anna Catherine Grace Memorial Organ, which uh, the, is named after the main donor who uh, passed away a few years ago and left us as her final gift, although she'd been a patron of music in the diocese for many years. Um, this was her final gift. Uh, this was actually a project that was supposed to start back in uh, when I was first hired in 2013, but uh, we found out that we had a lot of exterior things that needed to be done very urgently. So we replaced the, uh, the roof, did the tuck pointing, everything. So I think $7 million later, then yeah. we were ready to address the organ. <laughs> well, it's no good having a new organ if it's going to If the room's over falling it, so, down, yes, right, exactly. So. Um, but it was it was very interesting because of course this started out as a rebuild project because the Mueller organ that was here before was only 30 years old, oh. and of course you don't want to throw anything that's 30 uh, years old away. Um, over time, though, the rebuild quotes that we got, who were from very respectable builders, um, all suggested that we replace, except for one firm, and they're out of business now. So oh. we feel like we made a decent <laughs> decision, but. Uh, in any case, uh, at, at that point, we began to wonder, well, perhaps it would be better to examine a mechanical action organ because we're here in the gallery, everything is um, close by, you know, a lot of the music that we do uh, suits that well. And in addition, you know, the intimacy of the playing action was something that was very attractive because the molar was very slow to speak and play and everything, it was very noticeable. Um, and so we eventually zeroed in on a, a more French eclectic sort of organ because we wanted uh, something that had not been here in the community um, so that students or whoever or just the general musical public could enjoy that. Um, the acoustic here is, is very generous, but um, it's also a small room, and uh, so it has some strengths and weaknesses with that. There are some things we could not do with this organ in a French concept because of the size of the room. We were just too nervous about it <laughs> being too much. Um, but the big, the big thing was that the dynamic scope of it be much larger. Uh, and so we have a lot of very quiet sounds on this organ. Um, the foundations you'll hear are very gentle, um, but it has plenty of power in the 2D, mostly from the reeds. And so uh, over time, it really became more of a French organ with some adjustments to make it so it could accompany well and all of that. And, and we're pretty happy with the result. <laughs> well, it is a beautiful uh, facade, certainly. And like I said, the room is not incredibly deep, but man, is it, it's very yes. tall. We're actually way up here in the gallery, so you've got a lot of, of vertical space here to work I with. I think uh, the dimensions, it's maybe within a couple feet difference between the width and the height. Oh, wow. And then, so proportionally, it was intended to be uh, twice as long oh. and go through the alley, but this was the Jim Crow South, so they would not give the Catholics an easement through the alley, uh, which is a shame, but great for our utility bills. So, <laughs> yeah. but, it's, but it makes it an ideal room because uh, you have a benef the, many of the benefits of a very large room in the residence. Uh, but it's also very direct. The organ is voiced very gently, um, and there's nothing that feels forced. It's sort of what we wanted was this organ to sound like a big hug, mm. orally, and I, I think it does that. Wonderful. Well, I'm anxious to hear some of it again. Um, let's um, let's start over there with with your great division. Um, and I'll ask, do we call them French? Is it Grand Org or is it? Yeah, well, the the naming convention with. NOAC is to use English names. Okay. Um, we, that becomes, kind of falls apart in this organ because there are so many reads. So eventually <laughs> we have different names. But yeah, and I think you'll hear right away that the great open is very gentle compared to an Anglo-American or German organ, um, and especially all of the other foundations on the great too. You also hear, too, in this, we're going to kind of voice that low, but you hear a treble ascendancy, mm -hmm. which is also important in here because there's a big sort of bubble between 200 and 2,000 hertz. So it, it was interesting when we were doing test pipes years ago now, um, because down here, the room is very strong. Up here, 
we needed the organ to do more. I see. That, it's a very gentle sound, but it's, it's definitely a, a, a principal yeah. sound. We do have a lot of edge to it and a lot of brightness there. Right. Um, so it cuts through well. It's very, it is a broad sound, mm -hmm. I think. And then, um, anyhow, as we go through the chorus, also you'll hear differences in the Frenchness of this, too. So. All right. Well, uh, let's continue with our eight foots. What else do we have Good. there? There's a viola, which is sort of a second principle, depending on where you are in the uh, stop. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got a lot of uh, principal edge to it. You could convince me that that is a, a principal sound almost, right. but it's still got a, a, lot of, a lot more brightness than the, right. than the principal. Well, and the, uh, it's just stringy enough that you can still use it with flutes at four mm. foot too. So it, it's a kind of, kind of chameleon-like stop that's very useful. All right, and going on there, a new chimney flute. brighter sound there than your typical French mm -hmm. sort of Borden, but uh, so definitely useful and colorful, but I assume that right. blends very well with, yep. with the others. Yeah, well, and, and you have all of the different, uh, well, most of the, the, uh, the uh, principles and strings, I think, are 80% uh, tin, mm. and then, uh, and the harmonic flutes, and the unison flutes are, are or the stopped ones are all 75 percent lead. Okay. So it's different it's different, than different than and they're and they're woods only in the bases too. So okay. it's you know, uh, but but yeah. Anyhow. All right, and then after that, harmonic flute here. Yeah, very different sound there, mm -hmm. very different uh, effects. They actually work pretty well together, too, if you need a little bit more clarity in the middle. Yeah, very nice. Okay. The, we, the next is the, the four foot principle. Okay. Which, the, one of the things that is interesting, and you hear it in different times, and you don't hear it as much interestingly while it's played by itself, but the four foot principles in this organ are much more fluty yeah. than in the other organs I've played, which was yeah. an intentional thing from Noack. And so you hear some ascendancy as you add more upper work, but as uh, service playing, it's interesting because you <laughs> don't get the jump yeah. in terrace from the four foots often that you would expect. So it's, that's been a, an adjustment, but it's beautiful the way it works in Fondorg registrations too. Well, let's just play with, uh, play the eight foot principle for me the, uh, and then add the four foot to it just so we can hear how it sounds. brighter towards the treble, mm -hmm. but down in the, in the lower voices, yeah. it's, it's very gentle. All right. We have a four foot open flute. Um. I imagine with the eight foot flute, the, the harmonic flute, that adds quite a lot of yeah. brightness to it. So the, the instrument has flute choruses, you have harmonic on the swell, which you get mm -hmm. to later. And then this has, of course, the availability of the two eight foot flutes and then the mm -hmm. open flute. And then the choir has stop flutes. Okay. So it's a uh, nice, this room is very uh, downstairs. The, the sound 
it's difficult to distinguish stops often. Mm. And so one of the, the primary things with this instrument was to make sure the differentiation downstairs was big. And so indeed downstairs, I mean, you, the strings are totally different to construction, the two sets and so on. So you can really, even people that don't know the organ will pick no, them out. No, if it's the choir string right, or the soul right. string. All right, very good. All right, let's continue on the great. Okay, um, you have a, <clears throat> and then from here it's all upper work too. It worked out neatly in the terraces that we were pretty much had uh, upper work and uh, reeds in the top terrace and then flues on the bottom. So you have a, um, a two foot fifteenth. And then a, a big quint in here too. So uh, as we go through the mixtures, it's really sort of like a six-rank mixture that's, that's split so that you don't have to use the whole thing all the time, which is it's not an oppressive-sounding mixture, but it's nice to have that flexibility for, for congregational stuff. But interestingly, the, the mixtures are set up so that the unisons and quints are pretty much the same intensity, hmm. whereas in a traditional plongeau, you would have uh, louder quints. So if you want to change that, then you just add the, the quint. And like then it works. a little more of that, that fifth. Right, so. right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as we're going through this, we'll just add the low mixture. And then at this point, you start adding some of the, the other eight foots because that eight foot is so gentle in the, the plunger here, you really almost use always the, yeah. at least the flute in the principle, but probably the, even that. the viola too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? so, uh, so again, with uh, adding the high mixture, and then we'll add the 12th just so you can kind of hear the harmonic change. definitely adds a, a different tone to that whole chorus. Right. And the chorus here, again, you, you would usually use with a 16-foot pitch, too, which is very gentle here. Uh, we'll have to go back and get that yeah, one, too. Sure. It's a lot of a lot of gravity that just, just mm -hmm. sort of picks you up, even though it's not a it's not a huge sixteen no. in there. But then everything, yeah, lines up really well there. And if you want to do sort of more German things, you ditch the viola, ditch the twelfth, and then you can. Yeah. yeah what what stop was that that you added? Seventeenth. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So we have we have a. a you know all of the partials there. You can just split them out as individual. Right, and so the mixture there. which is yeah, this is wonderful because yeah, you can you can pull it that way. So on, and then you also have you have a three rank cornet. It's kind of naughty. Should have been five ranks, oh, but. Yeah. We, we don't have that kind of money around here, so <laughs> we had to use it with the flute. It's enormous. Yeah, that's useful enough right there. Yeah, it's nice to have the contrast on the manual with, you know, the principal one, too, for, for him stuff. Um, and then we have... Well, we should go back and get the 16. Yeah, let's do this. This is a, what is this stop called? This is the double diapason. Double diapason. So it's in facade yeah. in the center here. Um, and th this is, I think, everyone's favorite principal stop on the <laughs> organ. We heard this first. And, oh, my goodness, that is so beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. Play, play some of the bottom. I just want to hear a little bit yep, sure. by itself. And then, of 
course, you have the low four. You have the low four or five here, right? Yeah, in the right spot, in the front, so. so. Yeah, it just purrs along nicely there. It's funny because when uh, the organ was being finished, of course, it was voiced by Nami Hamada mostly, and then Bertrand Cattieu from France was involved too. And I remember Bertrand saying, when the you hear that, and then the contrabass, he says, <laughs> "Just does this <laughs> like you're bowing," and you do hear that in them. Yeah. They just they're they're pretty quick with the initial speech, right. but then yeah, it's just bit. it has a little well, bit. More and then it. with the with the chorus though, it, it just lends so much gravity, even it's, though by itself it's yeah, not that. It's loud not forceful. Not. It's very yeah. versatile. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have some reads here in the. Well, uh, one read one only. Read one. So this is where the smaller room sort of worked. Okay. So um, we. We were nervous about that. Um, uh, it probably could have been fine to have them all, but so we did want to do something interesting. So this this organ is like a, you know, it's it's much different, but very uh, much related to the St. Peter's D.C. No Act that was finished a few years ago, and uh, which uh, Didier and Kevin and the whole team they did a beautiful job, and we were just uh, astonished when we heard it how beautiful it was. <clears throat> but since we had a little bit more. Uh, space to work with here and everything else. Uh, that organ, all of the reeds are, I think, Kavai Cole style reeds. And we thought, well, we would like something that also represented classical French literature. And so the trumpet on the grate and the cromorne on the uh, choir are both models of Clicquot. Oh. So this is actually from the, I think, the Kavai Cole and Royal Mall, but that was retained from yeah. Clicquot by <laughs> Kavai Cole. So he, he liked it, we like it, it's, <laughs> it's a great stop. But you can hear um, the, the very different sound of this, and in the room, the harmonics just come alive. It's very commanding. And that's the first stop in the great where I've really been present. I've been aware of where the stop yes, is speaking yes, from. Yes. Really coming out of the top of the organ. Yes. Yeah, and, and I was really surprised with these stops because I thought, you know, they would run out of gas really early. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone always says that about French reads. But I mean, you can go up. And then, of course, you've got the giant cornet if you want more up top. <laughs> so, you know, up, yeah. there's yeah. plenty of sound. This is like a not every week stop sure, in the chorus. Sure. I mean, it's, I don't know if the listeners will get a sense of it, but the projection downstairs is huge, mm -hmm. so you really have to be careful when you use it. Okay. Well, that's, our, that's everything in the grate. Um, let's go down to our lower division. What do we call our, our bottom manual? Here? Choir. Choir uh, it's it's the, definitely the foil to the grate. Um, okay. It's a lower level here, um, and so... It's uh, uh, on the impost level with the swell. You can use it as one giant division if you want, but yeah, this is, uh, and so you have, uh, none of it's in the facade, but you can hear the, the principle here, the diapason eight is right behind it. Okay. smaller, a little more speech in that one. Mm -hmm. Just let's compare it with the great principle just to see where we are. Yeah, just a, a smaller version, a little little different attack on it. So. And this room too, uh, <clears throat> you have the issue that um, because things get mushy downstairs, it sounds like this, the choir up here are very articulate, but you go downstairs and it's just right, you know. So you hear okay. sometimes you think, oh, what kind of organ were they trying to build here? But you need it downstairs. If you had all slotted diapasons in this, it wouldn't oh, yeah. work at all. It'd just be bleh. So, so probably not as, as chiffy down there. No, as, not at all. Okay. Very just very vocal, like yeah. John Burbaugh would say. Yeah, right? okay. So, uh, and then uh, you have a totally capped uh, gedect here too. Very nice. And then uh, viola, which is to tenor C, um, we, the case started to eat the room, <laughs> and we needed to be mindful of the fact that we have a choir here. So we had to sacrifice some space, and one of the things was that we were only able to go down uh, okay. to tenor C for this in the Celeste. Uh, but this is a cavaical solutional, basically. Mm -hmm. And 
with its celeste. Yeah, very nice. It's not not a super uh, edgy string, but but definitely useful. Right. Well, and we needed something that would work for accompanying. The swell strings are a totally different I animal. There will be. Yeah, that's what it. <laughs> but this is the, this is uh, very useful too, and a little okay. less presence. So, uh, also four foot principle here. Yeah, sounds more like what I would expect of. Almost a Germanic principle. To, yeah, it's to it's like. definitely a little bit less fluty than the uh, swell and, and okay. great ones. Yeah, the beautiful chimney flute. This is one of our favorite stops on the organ. Yeah, very nice. It's really pretty, of course, with a flute. Yeah, that's interesting. It's very, it lends a lot of brightness, but it doesn't have that piercing two-foot. Again, yes, yeah, very mindful of the room. Yeah. You know, we couldn't drive these. <clears throat> yeah, and so, uh, uh, interestingly, it doesn't work in the cornet at all. Really? <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> when we do the decomposé here in a second, yeah, we have to use the principle for everything. It's very interesting. The room okay. just, it's a room thing. Um, but, but anyhow, uh, we also have a Nazar, of course. Two foot flute. Uh, there we go. We'll come back to the others. A little bit more wind flexibility in this division too, oh, okay. which is was something we wanted, we, but uh, not too much. Uh, then, you, of course, you have the the cornet de composé, which you can use differently with the two foot and the principal. So on. Uh, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of options there. Yeah, yeah. It's we wanted to have a, available as flute scaled and as principles. So of course, here's a four two principles. So, and then uh, the, interestingly, the weight in this division kind of comes from the Borden actually. So. I can believe that's just an 842 principal chord mm -hmm. with a nice yeah. foundation on well, it. Well, and it's and that added some flexibility for early music too. You often would not pull the flute for that. Uh, the mixture sounds big here, but really is is quite gentle downstairs. It almost works like a, a cavalier uh, carillon in the mm. the 2D, okay. but it also functions in its you know usual context here too. So we'll hear less of that yes, down there, because yeah. it's actually not horribly big here. No. It's not no, ridiculous, no, no. Um, no, and but that's interesting that it would be. The compositions are gentle. You know, we don't have any repeating mixtures in okay. this organ, which is interesting, but, yeah. but it, it functions. So, uh, and that was a thing where we wanted to do some romantic stuff, but like there are no progressios in this organ or anything like that, because even at the end of his career, Kavai Cole went back to the more traditional mm. form of mixtures <laughs> and so on. Um, but yeah, this, this division is definitely the more classic of, yeah, of the divisions. Uh, we have a, 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 the one German stop in the organ, a quinte ton. It's really a not French stop.
No, it doesn't. It's not French at all, but it's useful to have that extra color. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And to really do some different things. So well, sometimes it's nice to wander that's outside. Right. The, that's right. That's right. Well, and when the organ was, yeah, the only it doesn't work in the the Grand Jeu de Tierce at all, of course. <laughs> but but it was interesting because it was originally, I think, in the spec as an eight foot stop, mm -hmm. and I said that's garbage. I don't want it. And then, <laughs> but then when we got to the point where we thought we could have a sixteen foot flue on every manual, I said we should bring this back. Mm. And then you know, the question was, was it going to be a Cavai Cole style, which is like the Lieblick, or mm -hmm. do we do a, a more German one? So this is fun, and it's a, be yeah, it a beautiful you, solo voice, too. Something. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that it could be a nice little, mm -hmm. yeah. good stand out against other yep. things. All right. All right, well, and then we have uh, two reads in here? Three, Three actually. Three reads, even. Okay. Yeah, so they're um, asking friends as we were doing the spec uh, asked all kinds of organists, everyone said, you must have a trumpet on the choir. And since all the other reeds are kind of French, this one is at least nominally more English. It's a cornopian. Oh. Although it has Burton as Shalot, so well, it's yeah. <laughs> really a cornopian. <laughs> but, but it is nice to have, again, stepping outside the yes. norms of design to have something that's just did, did some contrast. Right. Uh, it's a great accompanying stop, of course, because you can you know, close the box and put it behind the great chorus. And oh, yeah. Uh, you also have a, uh, the other Clico stop on the organ. We heard the great trumpet. This is the Cremorne, which is based on the Poitier example. Didier Grissin, who owns Noack, is from there. So, of course, this is probably his favorite stop. Much bigger than I was prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Well, we forget that with the but with the Baroque organs, you know, you had a difference in color, but right. th that's really is about as intense if we compare it to the great trumpet. There's more harmonic development, yeah. obviously, but you know, it's it's still up close, and you look at them pipes and very similar. Okay, interesting. I have to check them out. But yeah, that, that was just surprising. But I, I can understand how it would fit there then with the uh, the rest of the division. Yeah, if, it, you're, if you're thinking that classical design. Yeah, well, and it's not subtle at all. Well, and <laughs> and and one of the things that Bertrand explained to us too was that if you go Clicquot with one of those reeds, you need to the the mm -hmm. uh, the trumpet and crumhorn pair is very important. Mm -hmm. If you went great trumpet that was Cavai, you would want. Uh, Kavai, you know, clarinet, which is, is very interesting. I think you hear that um, because the other read in the division is the 16 foot clarinet, which is a copy of the Notre Dame, the famous 16 foot clarinet there, which you can hear is much more gentle. Well, the uh, so this, this is such a lyric stop, too. I mean, it's just gorgeous in so many different ways. It, it even can function as the, the continuo read in the pedal, although we don't use it for that much. <laughs> but it, it's also the de facto 16-foot great read, because we don't have any. Okay. But uh, you know, it can function in that larger fashion. Much darker, much darker than the Cremorne. Or as a solo stop. It's lovely. It's one of my favorite stops on the organ. It's just imagine. gorgeous. The lyricism of that stop is is in stark contrast to the Cremorne. So it's, it's so different from the Cremorne. It's, it's wonderful. The, again, the, the idea of having these options, you know, every stop in this organ could mm -hmm. be a solo stop. Yeah, so. definitely. All right, well, that's everything on that side. So we're going to come over here, and I'm going to get out of the way to let everyone else have a view. Flip sides here, so now we can see uh, the swell division. Um, tell me what we have in the swell here. This is looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, so the swell is is definitely the more romantic division. There are no mutations, uh, but you do have a, a straight mixture, four rank mixture, um, and then you have a, a chorus, uh, principal chorus. You have a flute chorus, all harmonic flutes, and then of course also a small uh, gedect there, warden, and then uh, you have. A, Reed chorus, 
with oboe and box humana. Okay. So pretty much the whole the whole French deal. Yeah, need, yeah. <laughs> well, let's just start with the eight foots and uh, tell me what we have. Sure. Uh, this is the diapason, a little more, uh, it, you, again, it sounds articulate up here, but a little smoother than the other two divisions, eight foot principles. Darker, more English sound there. Mm -hmm. there we go. All right. The uh, the flutes, the quietest stop in the organ is probably the stop diapason here. A soft but very colorful. It's lovely, and yeah. I'll tell you that one of the one with this the music program here we do a great deal of Gregorian chant and mm -hmm. polyphony, and uh, if we're doing a company chant, uh, being able to use that um, in the tenor range, uh, accompanying the guys. You still hear all of the chord members. Mm -hmm but they don't fight, okay. which is interesting. Uh, it's, it's hugely helpful for us because it just lays in the back as a different color in the palette if we want to accompany the chair. Yeah, all right. Uh, it's a gorgeous harmonic flute, uh, very stringy in the, the mid-range like you want it, and then just huge treble sensi. compared to the great one, mm -hmm. which is bigger, but not quite as colorful. Yeah, they're similar, but I can mm -hmm. see the difference there. Yeah. Uh, and then, <clears throat> as we mentioned earlier, we have the, the Kavai Cole Solitional and Celeste in the choir, but then we have slotted Kavai oh. Gambas here. So these are much more Pretty acidic much, yeah. and, you know, they're, people either tend to love them or hate them. <laughs> <laughs> they, these are not Skinner strings. Definitely not a sound you hear in most American organs. No, no, and they're huge too. I mean, really? compared to the the pair here, really fade into the background. But the swell ones are much more intense with the Celeste now. Lovely, and it's nice to have the contrast once yeah. again between yeah. have some options. Yes, it's wonderful for accompanying, especially. And but the gamba, I mean, you can hear it in the oh, not over, but if it's not in the front door, you instantly notice. Oh, even really? downstairs, it has that that which is what we needed that cutting sound in here. So those are our uh, eight foots. Interestingly, if we pull the front door in that division, it's almost it's not as big, but it's as intense as the great. Combined with the box shut. Yeah, it's amazing how much it adds to it as you bring it yeah, in. Yeah. What a great sound. All right. So we have a uh, four foot prestant. Very 
nice. Still pretty articulate, but mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, Traverse flute, the, probably the prettiest harmonic flute in the organ. Very beautiful cool. attack yeah, and everything, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> and then uh, Octavan. And then all three harmonic flutes together. Brilliance there. You can almost mm -hmm. use that. I mean, that can be an accompanying chorus on its own. We, we can play hemnody with the <laughs> yeah, exactly. flutes on this organ. It's really neat because the flutes are almost as intense as the principles yeah. in this organ. So while, like I said earlier, it's difficult to get used to the, the way the forefoot step works, mm -hmm. at the same time, I mean, you can yeah, pull all the flutes and just go to town. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So uh, then we have a four inch mixture here, too. Um, Very pretty. It's it's the de facto pedal mixture since we don't have one, okay. but but uh, you know it functions very well too. It'd be great for hand playing. It's two foot mixture. So uh, we have sixteen foot Borden. We'll come back to. They're also really colorful. I want to hear that compared to the eight foot. Just to mm -hmm. remind me sure. of the difference. Very similar there, but in, in colorful and colorful. It's interesting because the Borden is huge downstairs. Really? Um, and, and in fact, you, you feel it more downstairs than the bassoon in that division, oh. and which is great because the 16-foot principle in the grate is so gentle. Yeah. And we don't have octave scrubs here because <laughs> everything's mechanical. Yeah. So having that Borden is huge when you're playing up in the upper register. Yeah, up, up here it's just, it's just a nice pretty sound. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's really got all that much gravity. Well, it. when we get to the pedal division, you have the same thing too. I, I don't know if it'll show up on the speakers, but, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting. Uh, then we have the reeds. So the reeds in this division are uh, Kavai Cole harmonic style ones. So the color is very interesting. Very rich in the mid-range. Yeah. Um, we also have a harmonic clarion in this division. Compare with the trumpet. Then together. Yeah, it's nice. Nice. They're big and bright, but they're not incredibly loud right. here compared yeah. to especially the. the reads over here right um, right yeah especially and if you can close them down that must be yeah yeah and we'll show that in just a second the it, it's interesting how uh, the reed courses work the the swell is colorful but quieter than the other mm -hmm. divisions reeds um, whereas the flutes in that division are bigger <laughs> and the choir flutes are smaller so it's uh, sort of a balancing act <laughs> going through a, a build I, it works very well but you kind of have to to use your ear or uh, one interesting thing with the clarion is downstairs, up here it's fairly bright, but downstairs it just adds richness, but no power at all. So it's a color kind of thing, it's a very interesting stop. Hmm. Uh, we also have a gorgeous bassoon here. So it's Lovely. interesting, it's very percussive sound yeah. when you use it's, it's lyric if you want to use it uh, as a solo stop in the treble. Uh, and of course, it doesn't have bells like the oboe, so it's, it's different even than the oboe. But if we use it in the reed chorus, it's a very percussive effect. That's a great effect. Yeah, it adds, it adds a lot. I mean, to you it. can it, well, and I mean, you can do it with the box shut too, and 
It's, that's fun too. Fades. Very nice. That, uh, Nathan Lauba played the uh, his well. I don't remember whose transcription, but the Rachmaninoff G minor prelude oh, yeah. for the dedication. <laughs> it was lovely on that because you have <clears throat> that color. Uh, you also have an oboe, which is I, I think goes to bells at C. Very petite sound, mm -hmm. yeah. which is interesting because uh, it's modeled after a Kavai Kolstad, but it's very d different than later examples. And then, of course, if you want it uh, more lyric and full, you can just add the eighth flute. If you want it to sing more, you have a harmonic flute. Nice. Really yeah, pretty. All made to work together. Yeah, really well. but and that's the thing too is and you, you think of Franck, you'd be asking for what the harmonic flute, the stop flute, oboe, and then the harmonic trumpet. So you'd have. More stuck by how the trumpet blends in with yes, the yes, yes. It's really interesting, yeah. Because I, I mean, I'm not, I don't use it much as a solo stop by itself, but with the oboe, yeah, it really just... the franc makes sense because it it smooths out the treble. The harmonic harmonic thing functions totally different than I expected. Yeah, it's amazing. <clears throat> uh, you have vox, which is uh, uh, clico a dombedo style, uh, but very similar to the, I think, the Notre Dame one, which is also Dombados, mm. but it has the cap shut. And this, we wanted it open more so we could do <laughs> kind of renaissance stuff. So of course, we can use it with, you know, typical kind of registration. sounds yeah very, and then very colorful. I meant to show too and then if you want to do crazy things just go over here and because the choir and the swell are on the same level I mean you can and then it uses can it transform itself into if stuff you, for, if you use it in the choir you could do something other than the big yes horn for yes the yeah yeah sounds. well and you have to couple because there are no mutations that division right, yeah. it, it, you kind of the gig is up when you pull the the traverse flute with the, the fox <laughs> you're not gonna run it doesn't sound like renaissance music anymore so but anyhow you have uh, of course all of those options there yeah. um, you have a very loud cymbals turn on that same level important yeah <laughs> The bishop was very excited when he heard it was finally installed. So we were for it to not be heard. That's so. right. That's right. We were happy to make him happy. So uh, good. Well, before we leave the manual divisions, there's one more stop we haven't talked about, and it actually is uh -huh. in the choir, and it's over here. It's in its uh, a different position than the yeah. other choir yeah. stops. We had yes. one more that we needed to add, and that's our our Ashramad. Right. So we we got a little excited, and the choir division kept growing <laughs> with color stops. So it's up on, it lives on the terrace up there, kind of out in the danger zone. So you still yeah, can't get it by accident. accident. <laughs> but if you listen to the, it, it's interesting downstairs, the Clicquot trumpet on the grate. Longer reverberation time, so it's louder. But of course, with us right here, the Shemad, which is tenor C up. Actually, not as loud. Yeah, interesting. But it uh, <clears throat> it has a lot of harmonic content and the percussiveness too. So um, well, it's really cool and has an effect in 
the grand jeu too. And it might be effective where we're standing, but I think the fact that it's horizontal where we were standing, I was getting a real distinct slap back yes. of the yes. back wall. Yes. So it was yeah. definitely bouncing yes. back and forth. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's, again, and that's just a Kavai Cole yeah. unison length trumpet on okay. its side, basically. Um, but yeah, and we only need it to tenor C because we'll hear the pedal reeds are <laughs> formidable. So, but uh, but yeah, it's neat and uh, yeah, and it definitely adds an effect to both visually and and mm -hmm. but not being super loud. Yeah, but it's it's got a definitely you know it's on. Well, it's and on. we can do like so if we if we register uh, the grand jeu here if we have it without the uh, the shamad. It's big, but the Shema just adds a lot of percussion to it. Not very pleasant at the console. Well, but. no, but it does add a, a definite different tone to it. So. Not, and hearing it in the reverb, um, yeah, you can you definitely know there's something different yes. there. All right, well, that was all of our manual stops. Now, that's what do we have in the pedal division here? So the pedal is based on uh, actually a lot of the facade pipes, mm -hmm. uh, which there are a number of units in this division, which uh, the organ is 75 ranks, mm -hmm. but the room is so bass heavy that we were able to economize on pedal stops a lot to expand the other things uh, because of the limited space and we had to keep things down out of the heat mm -hmm. was another thing. So actually we have a unit, uh, contrabass in the facade, which is metal. And then also available the eight foot pitch. And then an independent four foot. That 16 has some of that same sort of bowing quality yep. as the double diaphragm, yep. and it's not real forceful at all. Right, right. And we have the, the double from the grade is available as a bar or two. Uh, people, the, the biggest problem I think people have when they come here is they tend to over-register the pedal. Because mm. up here it doesn't sound like it's a lot, but downstairs, especially if you have an empty room, it's just too much. Um, we have a number of stops that were retained from the old organ in this division. Okay. This is a stop that was taken from another organ in 1924 Pilcher. Oh. It's mahogany, beautiful rank, uh, and just huge. And huh. is extended now up. We added a, a extension so that we have a stop flute. But this really works like an open wood. wood. Uh, you know, it's the, the contrabass has a more defined sound. This is yeah. definitely, and it, you can use it under quieter registrations, but of course it gives intensity to the full. And that's the first stuff I've heard that I thought, that's not from, that there's something different about yes. that one than yeah, everything yeah, yeah. else I've yes, heard. Yes, yes. Um, it, it, it's a, a sound from a different era. Yes, <laughs> In a different yes. period than uh, everything absolutely. else. That's interesting. You, and then your swell borden is borrowed down here also. Um, you said stop flute. Yeah, so the, I mean, here are the flues together, in effect. Pretty articulate. And then adding the sub bass. Thickens the it does. soup. <laughs> but it's not very loud. That's right. Um, at least here, you know, maybe right. it's... Right, right. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's, the problem is when you... Uh, multiply it with the reeds too, because ah. the reeds, as we'll hear, are big. We also have a, a 32 foot extension that goes down to Contra F. Which is huge. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then the quints are pretty effective for the last five notes downstairs, because, yeah. I mean, that would have been a big, big bill yes. if we had to buy those. <laughs> but that's also mahogany uh, from that. Uh, and then we have a bunch of reeds. Uh, we've got a, uh, 
so what we wanted to do was we wanted to have a continual read for Bach and like everything that wasn't French, uh, because one of the, the issues I've had with a number of organs that are built in a so-called French style, um, the reeds are very forced, which I don't find these to be forced at all. And it also, uh, you know, you, you have a lot of flexibility through, you have bars from the swell and things like that. And so things are just more relaxed. It's very difficult to service play, I find, on if all we had was the bombard here. I yeah, mean, it, you sure. just, you couldn't use it. So what we did was we made a 16 through eight foot French unit mm -hmm. And then the 32-foot uh, Muller bassoon that we had, which is half length, um, was extended uh, full length as a 16-foot trombone. Okay. And so <clears throat> they're very similar construction. We'll see upstairs. But the, the trombone can be used in the continuo style. Still pretty big. It's, yeah, it's still big, but it's it's not yeah. overwhelming. And I mean, if you want something smaller, you've got the bassoon borrow from the swell too. Okay. Uh, but then, the, yeah, the 32 extension is very, very interesting because you hear it, it has very little harmonic content because yeah. of the the resonator. So if you use it with the 16. It's big, but not in it's your meant face. meant to add more of the, the underpinning to That's the right. rest of the ensemble. Yeah, you can mind, definitely so. use it under full swell, and it works oh. fine. And that, it worked well in the old organ like that, too, um, which is great if you have doing Vidor mass and, or Vierne mass and you have a small <laughs> choir. You know, you can't use all the great reads on this thing in no way. Oh, sure. um, but anyhow, that's that unit. Then you have the full out Bombard unit. And then the eight foot trumpet extension. So, of course, one of the cool things that you can do with this instrument is that you can play a real French plongeur with the pedal melody as the eight foot trumpet. Sings yeah. through. I it mean, it's through that whole yeah, ensemble. and and then you've got the clarion, which is bordering on too much. If we ever do a Mahler five transcription, it'll be good for that. <laughs> the beginning. I'll be waiting here. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, but together, uh, listening to how these work, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull real quickly here so you can hear and we'll couple in this well make sure but it's the trombone in the 32 this is the bombard in the 32 and then the entire reed chorus That's definitely where the power in this instrument yes, lies. Yes, yes, yes. I can't imagine it's even louder down there. Oh yeah, it's, it's huge. Yeah, because all of this is way, you know, 20 feet above our head. So, yeah. but yeah, that's that's the uh, the whole shoot and match. Well, it's a wonderful instrument, and I'm so glad to get to hear it, and I can't wait to hear a little more of it. Yeah.
We see here that the case is very easy to access. There are simply doors on either side of the case. This is the swell side. And it's separate chests. So this is all for the um, flues, and then the reeds are in the back, of course, reeds. Uh, reservoirs, two in different pressures, of course. And then uh, the lower here. Swell action, facade actions. This has, you know, these self adjusting pneumatics, too. Got easy access to the roller boards and everything for the swell right there. So all of the lateral trackers, except for these, are carbon. And the other, the vertical ones are all sticks. Up above, we can see some metal tubing. Uh, this comes from the choir chest, which is to our left, and goes out to the uh, shamad pipes. Choir, same thing. Just there. The action's basically the same. I don't know if you noticed, but the swell pedals are reversed too, mm -hmm. so they match. Because the, the roller board in the console made it impossible to hit the swell shoe above E and F, so they would change that. Here are the doors on the opposite side of the case. Having gone through, we find the ladder that takes us up to the pipe chambers. And going up, the first thing we see is the 32 foot that came out of the original molar organ. It was revoiced a bit, but very little was done to it. it. Still has the same tongues and shallots it had before. Continuing through, we're in between the swell and the choir here. We can see some of the facade there. We see the motors for operating the expression shades of either division. A regulator above us. And this leads us into the swell division. The reeds against the back of the chest. The layout in this chamber, as is the choir, has um, a diatonic layout here, so opposite sides for most of the compass, but the bottom octave is all on chromatic chests at the end. The reason for this is it allowed them to lower the grate, which is right above us. You see the Vox Humana and the Oboe. And then we continue through, and now we're in the choir. And the same layout in here. Most of the pipes are on diatonic chests, but when we get down to the bottom on the ends, uh, this is all chromatic. Looking at our cornopia in there in the front, and then the clarinet right next to it. I feel like in here you can see a bigger difference between the high tin pipes, like this one right here, and the high lead of the flutes, the material being much more gray. So, if you look at the chrome see the shallot design. 
it's a little different. It's like a French uh, block design too, but then it sounds like For the record, it's usually not recommended that one blow into reed pipes as the moisture from your breath can uh, negatively affect the brass of the reeds. It's going out back here and we're behind the swell. We can see the tops, or rather the bottoms, of the 32-foot pilcher pipes here. They are upside down, resting on a railing. They can be tuned from underneath, but the mouths are, are way up there, so we'll have to go up to look at them. So here we go up to the great and pedal pipes. And there are the mouths of the 32 foot pilcher pipes there, tubed off of the pedal chest. And then next to that is the pedal reed chest here. We see the uh, bombard in the back, the 32 foot going all the way up, and then right in front is this very large four foot clarion. There are two such pedal chests, uh, one on either side of the Great Division, which is right here in the middle. You see this hammered Great Trumpet right here in front of us. The slider motors are hidden underneath the walkboard that can be lifted up for access to repair those as needed. Here's a look at the great pipes, the trumpet followed by uh, the mixtures, two and two thirds, the chimney flute, there's our harmonic flute. And our principal, there's the mounted cornet, three ranks of it. You can see the facade pipes, how they are over length. There's a lot of open space at the top of the speaking area. And there's our noisy Zimbelstern. Look back around, that ladder takes you up to the top of the case, should you ever have any need to go up there. Here's a look at the pedal pipes on the other side. Same thing, four foot clarion and the bombard. Here we are back underneath on the first floor. We can see the electronics here. Get a little closer look at those on their way out. and our choir trackers and regulators.
I think I need hearing protection to sit up here. Bruce, thanks so much for demonstrating the uh, 2021 NOAC organ here at uh, the Cathedral of St. Paul in uh, Birmingham. This has been fantastic to see. Um, the, uh, we have a total of 78, no, 75 ranks on 60 stops. Right. I can do this. Right. And uh, yeah, it's all, it all comes together very well. It's just amazing to hear what you can do with all these colors. Um, yeah. I'm excited. I want to hear some more of it. But um, for now, um, you have uh, concerts where people can come hear the instruments, some other events coming up? Yeah, so we had a plan to start a concert series in 2020, mm -hmm. which wouldn't be using the organ. And then, of course, everything else in the world bad happened. But uh, this year, we finally have one going that is uh, we're calling the Downtown Concert Series. And and uh, you can find it on our website, uh, www.stpaulsbhm.org slash concerts. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyhow, look for the Cathedral of St. Paul. Um, and we have a great lineup this year. Uh, we have Jonathan Ryan here. Uh, we have a choral concert right before that uh, by Bird Ensemble from Seattle. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, also uh, Johann Vexo is coming after Christmas, and then Jens Korndorfer in the spring. And then there are other local people doing things too at, at a very high level, I should say. But, you know, maybe names that your listeners might not know. But we're, we're very excited. It's about one thing a month uh, because we, real, again, really want to share this instrument well, with the public. And it's a great instrument, a great vehicle for showing off of the talent you have locally yeah. and, and, and wonderful that you're giving so many people the opportunity to, to right. use it. Right. So uh, if, there will be a link down to the, in the description to the cathedral and your concert series. So look down there. Down there, you'll also find specification of the organ and link to the cathedral, link to our website where you can become a sponsor of the organ media foundation, but more about that because NOAC is a build, is a member builder of APOBA, the Associated Pipe Organ Builders of America, and they make it possible for us to come to places like this and make videos like this. Uh, so for more information about your local APOBA member builder, go to apoba.com. Uh, but it's also sponsors like you that make these videos possible. So you can go to organ.media, click on support, and you can become an organ media video sponsor and help us make videos like this one. Uh, we depend on your support. We still have some more videos from Alabama coming up, so make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click on the bell for notifications. Until our next videos are out, though, you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Broke, and The Organ Experience. Once again, Bruce, thank you so much. This is a beautiful uh, instrument here. Congratulations. Thank you, Brent. Until next time, I'm Brent Johnson. Thank you for watching. <laughs>